We've got balls and they're robotic. We're gonna to talk to Paul Barbarian, the CEO of Robotics, as well as Adam Wilson, the founder, right now, this week in Techstars. Hey everybody, it's David Cohen. I'm the founder and CEO of Techstars, back with another edition of This Week in Techstars, joined again by Claire Tischer in Hi. the studio. Thanks for hanging and of course. talking about stuff with me. We want to cover the news really quick before we get into the Orbotics yep. interview. Uh, as always, uh, news brought to you by SunGrid. Uh, we have a big thing happening this Friday and Saturday. We do. We're that traveling. Is, that is the reunion in Vegas. Mm -hmm. That should be interesting. Third annual. First time in Vegas. Third annual. That's right. We did it in Seattle, and now uh, we did it in New York, and now Vegas. How are you feeling about taking everyone to Sin City? I am not taking everyone. I'm also not paying for drinks or anything else. It's it's up to them. But we have what, 150, yeah. 160 people coming. Mm -hmm. Most Close of them are. To I think it's like 60 some uh, uh, of the companies that have you know we funded are going to be there. Yeah. Uh, we have a, you know a dozen or so of of you know our our most interesting mentors are going to be around. Steve Blank uh, is going to do a talk. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve, of course, is. You know, the father of customer development wrote Four Steps to the Epiphany. He's going to uh, talk to the companies. Uh, we have Don Dodge coming from Google. Very cool. Uh, Don is going to talk about uh, setting impossible goals, which is something that Google does mm -hmm. as a practice. Uh, he's also going to talk about failing before succeeding. So I'm looking forward to those inspirational talks. Uh, we also have Ben Ha. Do you know Ben? I do. I have Cheeseburger Incorporated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you read the Lolcats? I do read the Lolcats yeah. and the Icon has Cheeseburgers. You know, the robotic ball and the Lolcat, there's something there with cats and robotic balls. We, we should figure that out. There's get, some harmony waiting to you know, happen. We should get those companies together. I agree. <laughs> uh, but ben, you know, Ben's going to do a talk about going from two people to 50 people and sort of being an internet phenomenon uh, coming out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, those guys are way, way bigger and have more traffic than most people even know about. Tons of funny stuff. And Ben is a hilarious uh, He's awesome. dude to begin with. Um, and, and so, yeah, and our whole team's going, and we're just going to spend Friday and Saturday there. Yep. We also have uh, some of the management of uh, the Techstars network, mm -hmm. uh, people who are running accelerators that are modeled after Techstars. Some of them are going to be there on Saturday. Uh, so it should be really fun, mm -hmm. and you know, worst case, it's Vegas, and you know, it'll be okay. <laughs> it'll be, it will be an okay. Time. You have, you have big plans for while you're there, other than I this? don't. I'm excited to yeah. network with all the founders. I think it's really cool that the speakers that are coming, some are mentors of certain programs and alumni that maybe haven't met them before, will get the chance to interact with them. That's, that's a big thing. I mean, you know, we're we're in you know various cities now, and so having people from Seattle meet the people from mm -hmm. New York, right? That that's something we love doing, and they get a lot out of it. So. Another thing we do is this, these paired dinners. Yeah. We need to think of a better name for the paired dinners because it's actually three companies, not two companies. Yeah. But we stick companies together that don't know each other, mm -hmm. but that we think can learn something from each other, either yeah. based on the stage of the business or, you know, the market there. And we make them go to dinner together. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, a lot of a lot of meeting new people, a lot of socializing, really great for the alumni, and we're excited to be able to do that every year. Along with that collaborative. Um the slides for each company that will have what they can offer and what they need help with. Yep. So it's That's a good right. icebreaker. Every single company there will contribute something to every other company. Right. Whether that's product or help. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the beauty of Techstars is everybody's really helping everybody. We're a big family. It is. It is like, you know, Techstars is forever. That's what we like to say. It's we not are. just a three month thing. <laughs> Um, and of course, if you're hanging out in Vegas and you happen to be watching this, yeah, uh, we do have a happy hour that's open to everybody. We do. It's going to be 7.30 to 9 at the Seahorse Lounge within Caesars. It's free. You just buy your own drinks, but we'll have founders, alumni, hopefully um, a lot of people can come. So if you happen to be in Vegas, if you live there, or if you're visiting, yeah. or if you want to just come this weekend. If you like beautiful um, drinks with beautiful people and a Now beautiful let's give place. the date because people will watch this later. Oh, so true. to make sure, is that the 10th, the 10th of this December? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, pretty quickly after the show releases. If you go to techstars.com slash events, you can RSVP. That is a new thing we have as well, the events page on techstars.com. It's great, yeah. That has all of the sort of public stuff that, you know, where you can come and meet yeah. either alumni companies or, or our, you know, management, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you can always watch techstars.com slash events yep. to find out about these things. Uh, no longer do you have to just scan the Twitters. Yeah. We've always had people say, well, when is the next New York happy hour? Yeah. And rather than keep track of them, 
because they couldn't make it to the first one. Just point people back to one spot. The other thing we're doing in Vegas is we have the Zappos tour. We're going to take we do. some of the companies out there and, and see the shoes, I On guess. On a bus. Yes. Shoes. A big, a big bus that looks like a shoe. Do founders like shoes? I think most founders have at least two shoes. That's good. Yeah, so they'll learn about that whole process. <laughs> And you know we're their company culture is great. That's the whole point. We want we want mm -hmm. we want our companies to understand the Zappos culture and, and yeah. what it's all about out there. So yeah, that'll be a fun thing as well. Cool. Um, switching gears uh, out in Boston, mm -hmm. uh, we have some amazing companies that have applied. I was just in the selection meeting yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. uh, they did it at 7 a.m. Mountain Time, 9, 9 a.m. How nice of them for you. Yeah, and I am not a morning person, and so you know you... the first 15 companies, I don't even remember what they do. Um, so like we, had, we had you know, 20, 30, 40 really interesting companies applying in Boston, mm -hmm. uh, and it was really tough to sort of whittle them down and, and figure that out, but I think you know, this Monday uh, the finalists will hear about the fact that their finalists will be down to 30 companies, and then from there we'll get to the you know, 10 or 12 that cool. will we'll fund. So that's coming up. Cool. Um, Katie, Ray, and Aaron do a great job of bringing in awesome people every year. Katie has been fantastic in Boston. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really, the companies that were there last year, uh, I think it was just a fabulous group of companies, raised a bunch of money and mm -hmm. have really interesting things going on. So, um, of course, New York applications still open. Yep. Uh, you can apply for New York, uh, the mm -hmm. spring program. Yep. Uh, that's uh, really ramping up. I don't remember the deadline, but. Uh, There's people. also happy hours um, in December and January if you're interested in the New York program. In New York, so also you can go, on the events page. Go meet David Tish and mm -hmm. Adam and the gang. Yep. Um, look at techstarscom slash program slash schedule mm -hmm. for the deadlines. For the deadlines, because I don't remember them sitting here. Get your application in early to get even more consideration. That's right. That's really important. People forget that. Because you can prove your progress from the time you've applied. So that's the news, as always. Anything else? I think that's it. I'm that's excited it. for Vegas. Yeah, the gonna... hashtag is um, pound TSLV if you yeah. want to uh, vicariously TSLV. follow everything. So you can check it out and follow all the nuttiness. Mm -hmm. um, we have the interview coming up with the Orbotics guys. We want to thank SendGrid for sponsoring the show. Of course, uh, awesome company, awesome product that yeah. is now pushing 100 million plus emails a day. No big deal. They have competitors that haven't pushed 100 million emails yet. Ever. They do that mm -hmm. sort of, you know, a little bit after breakfast. Yep. Um, and Between so, cups of coffee. You know, these guys have really got to figure it out. If, if you have an app that needs to send email, uh, check out SendGrid, a great tech stars company uh, growing and, and doing amazing things. New partnership with CloudBees. Mm -hmm. uh, they seem to always have a new, you know, new sort of distribution channel or easy way for developers to pick it up. Yep. Um, and great way to add email to your cloud-based solution. So thanks to SendGrid. Cool. Well, thank you for helping with the news. Thank you. And we're going to roll on to the interview with Orbotics. Sounds good. This week in Techstars, we are really excited to be joined in the studio by the guys from Orbotics, uh, two of the three anyway. Uh, Adam Wilson, one of the founders, uh, and Ian is in China. He's not here, but also Paul Berberian, uh, who joined the company post Techstars just after the program. Right. Uh, you are one of the mentors, or have been the longtime mentor around Techstars and join the company, but tell us a little bit about what Orbotics does and what, what Sphero is. This is interesting. You're the inventor. All right, um, so Orbotics in general, we started out before Techstars um, trying to control robotics with our phone. We, we uh, approached you, David, with you know all the nifty little inventions that we had made with yeah. controlling our stuff, and um, we, we quickly moved away from you know, the hobbyist market towards something that we thought was more tangible and had a lot bigger audience, which was Spiro. Um, you know, late at night thinking about what Spiro, you know, what were we going to do? What, what could we make that was a robot that was fun and infinitely expansible to the world? Right. And we made the, um, the robotic ball that you control with your smartphone. So, so it's, a, it's a ball that you control with your smartphone. Yeah. So, so should we take a look at, maybe a video would help, right. Omar, if you could just throw up this, this video. Maybe you could just tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here as he plays it. So that's what we get a lot of the time. So it's a ball that you control with your smartphone. Um, yeah, in general, it's a ball that you control with your smartphone. But what we've done is we've allowed an SDK to be available to all developers so people can write their own apps and their own games that control this ball. Um, you also you will, are able to you know, create different games that 
in, uh, the simulate regular ball games that we've seen, golf, and here we like to do uh, racing at night. Um, so a bunch of people have balls and they're different colors and they just race around the track. They race around, it's you know the fanciest RC toy. But we also, here is a draw and drive on this video, which is where you can draw something out and the uh, ball will go drive it out and make that score like that. And all those things are built on top of the SDK that we made to show people that you can make a lot more than just our driving app or you can create apps that integrate with you know your environment in a real way, creating uh, a very interesting new class of gaming that we like to call mixed reality, mm -hmm. where we start to bring the games on your phone to the um, to the games in real life. And you know, for some kids, it's fun just to just to follow it. But right there, there's mixed reality pong where you you hit the ball with the paddle on the screen, which is a very different idea. So explain that. So so I have my phone and the ball's rolling around and right. I'm using my phone as a paddle? Somehow? Yeah, you see through onto the camera and we d detect the ball with the camera in um, augmented reality style. We, we give that in our library so that it gives an XY position and then when you hit the little paddle on the bottom, it just right. it notices that the ball hit that and sends it in the other direction. So This is uh, Mixed Reality Pong. Mixed Reality is a little different than augmented reality in that it, with Mixed Reality, virtual things on your screen are interacting with things in the real world, things in the real world being Sphero in this case, and virtual things being the paddle on your screen. And uh, what you end up having to do is go find Sphero on your screen and then hit it with the paddle. So some crazy apps are being built around this, but fundamentally, I mean, do you, do you think of this as a product for kids or for everybody, or how do you think about it? You know, we think about it as, you know, any we, products for gadget-loving geeks, right? So if you're 97 years old and you love gizmos, then you're going to love Sphero. And we really look at it as just kind of this the extension of the gaming world that's out there, right? It's not... Um, you know, we have the uh, traditional console games, and then we have the emergence of uh, casual games and mobile games. And we look at this as kind of a, a taking gaming to kind of the physical world, where you know you just pick pick Sphero up, you give him a double shake, you throw him on the ground, and you launch an app. And when we launch, we're going to have five separate apps. But in reality, we can think of you know we're we're building another five apps behind that, and we have over 500 developers that have signed up ready wow. to build apps for us. We have an incredible SDK with over 150 different functions for both Android and iOS. So we really want to explore the possibilities of what happens when you take a powerful computer in your hip pocket and you combine it with a robot that can do all sorts of um, you know, amazing things. Um, what sort of games, what sort of interactions, applications can you create? And it turns out that it's the more we sit and think about it, you know, our only limitation is, of course, real-world physics, right? Yep. The ball can't, you know, levitate, but it can do a lot of amazing things. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. We're working on levitation. Well, well, well it's, I mean, it's deeper. I mean, when you first see it, you're like, okay, it's a ball, but this ball knows how to do a lot of things that are programmable. What are some of those things that are built into it? So one of the more, more interesting things that Adam and Ian created, which is... Um, you're going to buy a, a $130 ball that has uh, an IMU in it. And for most of the you know, folks out there, you don't know what the hell an IMU is. But it's essentially the same thing that, that controls a satellite in orbit or uh, an airplane on autopilot. Um, the plane has a sense of where the, uh, the pilot wants it to go on autopilot. He says, I want you to go over there. But the plane just doesn't go there blindly. It has to maintain. Uh, its orientation so it doesn't you know, fall out of the sky. Right. It's the same thing with Sphero. Sphero is a, com um, a complete kind of uh, uh, autonomous operating robot and you just basically send requests and it figures out how to take your requests and turn them into actions. Right. So what that means is that there's a powerful computer here, there's a powerful computer in your pocket, they talk to each other and it enables you to do um, things that you, you wouldn't expect. Like you can 
Like if you were to take an RC car and drive it into a wall, right? First of all, it would probably break. But second of all, you know, it's just going to stop. But you can make Sphero drive into the wall and then, you know, do a figure eight, right? So you could detect that it hit a wall. You could detect the wall and do that. You can make it blink its colors. You can make it, uh, you know, run another pre-program. You okay, can so, so it also has these colors that you can control and uh, you can have it express its mood or whatever you, you'd like to do with it. Right. That. Or uh, different players in a game. Right. It has, it has a full spectrum RGB. So what's that? 16,000, yeah. 16,000 Only 16,000 colors. colors. Okay. Yeah. That's that's a, that should be enough. I so, think it should be enough. I like in Sorry, there's only four colors, the game. So that's, that's plenty, I think. Right. And the other cool thing is um, we get all of the information back, like you said. Like we would know when we ran into a wall. We also know when you're holding it in your hand and you tilt it in different directions. Yeah. So we're building a game where the colors are based on which direction you tilt it. And on your screen you have you know, sort of a, a Guitar Hero type of interface where you're trying to hit the colors as they come down. So uh -huh. like green, red, blue. You tilt the ball. You can imagine like a, almost like a Simon-like thing. Right, or memory could, games. Yeah. Memory yeah. game. Or imagine yeah. just a bunch of people dancing, holding their spheros, yeah. and they have to do certain moves based on uh, what the screen is saying, right? So you want developers to imagine all of these things. You, you built an API that makes it easy to build something on top of, of Sphero. Right, and we, we've also um, open sourced most of the basic apps along with all of our sample code. Just to like sure. give everybody pretty much, if, if we show you how we make our apps, and hopefully somebody else can take it beyond what we could do. Okay, so you've got you've got five apps, I think you said at launch. Uh, you, you've is the ball is this something I can order today? Can I go online and just buy one of these you guys? Can, you can go online and you can buy it, but it's going to take a little bit of time because the demand has been greater than we anticipated, and it's you know it's oh. taken us a little bit longer to turn up. Uh, I'm sorry, production. sorry to hear about all that demand. Yeah, uh, that's it's, terrible. It's 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 pretty exciting. I mean, I've never. <laughs> this is my seventh company that I've been uh, part of, and I've never been in a business that's had this much wind at our back. There's a tremendous amount of energy and passion from our fan base. That's just it's electrifying, right? I mean, you come to work every day knowing that hey, somebody really wants your creation, and that feels good not to have to go out and sell. But they have that pull from the market. Yeah, I mean, people love this thing. You, you, you know, you can go on GoSphero and you can watch all these videos. We're, we're showing some of them. You guys have been getting a lot of attention. You, you were on American Horror Story. Did I hear about this? What was that all about? Yeah, Sphero made a little cameo appearance yeah. in some uh, spooky hi-fi thriller. Um, right. I think that that was um, one of the writers for American Horror Story. Was like, there, you know, let's make this magical ball roll around a corner or do something, you know, spectacular and really scary. They, they couldn't figure out how to do it. They just, you know, well, this is kind of scary. I mean, they could put something like they this. They could put on. something like this on. Is this an accessory that you would you would buy with your right. spirit? There's a there's a little ball under there. So these were just um, a late night creation. We did a video of us making chariots. Um, Paul did a little one where you put the, the iPod on the back and use yeah. FaceTime to drive it around. Is that on here somewhere? Um, I don't think the Chariots is in our, it's okay. in our blog. Okay. So it's actually we'll kind of, a, it. It, it was kind of a hack together video. It wasn't one of our ones that we kind of promote usually, sure. but the, the idea that you put something on top of him and then the, you know, the iPhone could ride on there or whatever. Right. Um, they become something that you try to take off of the other one. So if you have two, you're trying to knock the Chariot off of each other. Yeah. Um, we, we hope to be able to use the chariot to put something more like a camera or whatever that a lot of people ask, like, you could put a camera in that ball. We're like, it's already challenging enough to tr control this ball at all and, like, get it to work. Putting a camera in it and balancing that out would be n nearly impossible. So, sure, but that we know that's where you're going. Come on. We right. say it's impossible, but that's what you're going to do. But we'll figure it out. <laughs> you but do we, the impossible. We can make almost anything. We're very proud of our team over yeah. there. And I remember during Techstars uh, down in the bunker, you guys had all of this like soldering guns and you know it's crazy like sparks coming out of there at night. We we thought for sure they're going to burn the building down. Right. We didn't. We're good at not. There was also building. some smoke coming out. I don't know what that was, but. Uh, you know, it seemed like it, it could easily catch fire in one right. way or another. Um, we still, same thing, we actually moved across, we uh, got some really nice space here in Boulder, and uh, we, it's much nicer than it should be for what we do in there. We often, you know, making sparks. Yep. Uh, this is all 3D printed, so we got a maker bot so we can 3D print, and you know, we, we love making stuff. Cool. So I, I want to talk a little bit about the evolution of this company because it's it's not what it was coming into TechStars. We we really just you know it was a people thing. We always talk about that people 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 market ideas, right? We we loved you guys. We thought you had tons of talent. 
I remember we we had no idea what it was you were actually going to do as a business. Right. I, mean, I think you didn't even really know. Uh, you you sort of applied. You had this thing that we could turn a light on and off with a with a phone, and we were sort of like, okay, you know, cool. Uh, can you start a car with that? I remember Nicole asking, and, and two days later we got a video of, you know, a phone starting a car. Right. Right. I mean, you guys just would, were cranking stuff out, and we could just tell there was a lot of talent on the team, uh, even though it was just you know small at that point. And you know, you went through the program. Talk a little bit about how you went from sort of you know the raw idea to actually arriving at what Sphero is today. Right. So, um, it. You know, arriving, like you said, at Techstars, Ian and I knew we could perform, we could make anything. In fact, in Techstars, I remember we made that car. Yeah. Right? And we sure. knew that that would be a simple thing to make. We're like, you could make a car. We made that in a night. We were just like, that's pretty interesting, but it doesn't have, there's no hurdle there. There's nothing challenging there. And so once we decided that we were going to make Spiro, you know, we went down the journey of actually making. But how did you, how did you get to a ball? Where did that come from? The idea? Yeah. Just that, that exact thing. Like, the car was easy, and then we're like, all right, we made an SDK for a car. You're like, that's cool. You made a racing game. And that's pretty much what we thought about. And then once we were like, even a humanoid robot, we could make some really interesting thing. OK, you made like a battling one. But a ball, when we thought about the number of games and apps that we could make for it, it just it blew us our minds. You know, let's make pool. Let's make bocce ball. Let's make all of these games that we could make mm -hmm. on top of a ball we knew that that was going to be the thing to make. Plus, in the world of robotics, the ball is like the ideal robot, right? It never gets stuck. It can go in any direction. It's, you know, elegant in shape and form. It, you know, there's no external parts that can get stuck on things. So it's a, it's a pretty magical um, concept. And actually, Ian, you know, when he was younger, he made that a couple of ball robots that would follow the sun. It's the, you know, little solar robots that mm -hmm. would go out and follow the sun. Um, Did they get really confused at the end of the day? It would just sit there. They didn't move as fast as Sphero. Yeah. Sphero moves at a pretty good yeah. clip. We're going to see much more of the Orbotics interview, but just wanted to take a moment to thank Twilio for enabling our studio and for sponsoring the show. Uh, Twilio enables you as a developer to build apps that communicate. Uh, it's a cloud infrastructure service, very, very affordable, easy to get going. If you want to send text messages or you want to do phone calls from inside your app, that's Twilio. They're the best at it. Got to check it out. Uh, they did recently run a Siri developer contest. Uh, beer Me is the app that won. Uh, it enables you to check on the ratings for beer just by asking Siri about it, and it uses Twilio in the background. So those are the kind of things you can enable easily with Twilio. Um, they also have a great app that I saw recently built on Twilio to call your sen senator to complain about censorship. If you're not following that issue, uh, people are trying to censor us on the web. Uh, we need to get the word out that we're not okay with it and it stifles innovation. Uh, so check out Twilio's blog. You'll find the click to call your senator and you can be educated on that issue. Thanks to Twilio. Let's get back to the Orbotics interview. So, so tell us a little bit about your journey, Paul. Paul. I mean, we know you're a serial entrepreneur. You've been a mentor with many, many tech stars companies. You were obviously working with these guys during the program. How did how did you end up as the, you know, third person, the CEO of the company? Well, it uh, you know, I I came into the 2010 tech stars experience right as a mentor, and I just finished um, number six, company number six, and I was looking for the next opportunity. So I came and said, look, I'm just going to put my heart into into mentoring this year, I'm going to give as much time as I possibly can because I had nothing else to do, mm -hmm. and uh, I just, you know, would would um, you know engage with all the companies. But Ian and Anna were just, you know, just the chemistry clicked, and I really loved what they were doing. And I've always had this fascination about how we're underutilizing the cell phones in our pockets, right? That we always underutilize them in terms of what they're truly capable of doing. Mm -hmm all the way back from the, um, you know, the first Blackberries. And this was something I said, this could really push the limits on the phone, you know, with not only with robotics and having to do a lot of the processing of the robot on the phone, but also with computer vision and somehow detecting the robot in the real world and making, making that experience uh, become more immersive. And Ian and Adam had the technical chops to do it. Um, 
you know, there's, there's categories of technical chops of folks that go through mm -hmm. tech stars, and you know this. Some people are like at the crazy end of the spectrum, really smart, could end up in any university program or at Google or at Microsoft in their R&D group. And there's other people that are really great at building websites, but great, great idea folks and great marketeers. Uh, Ian and Adam fell into that. They could go anywhere in the world and hang with any robot or software team and totally fit in. Mm. So uh, I knew there was something pretty special there, and I just wanted to be part of it and, and help help them build a company and help form their idea into something that we could take to market. And you have something here. You know, one of the things I say is, if you were to give Ian and Adam the specs of how this guy performs now back at Techstars, they'd go, you're, you're freaking crazy, man. There's no way you could build that. There's, I mean, not that, right? And so we, they, have, they have surprised themselves of their own technical capabilities yeah. and their ingenuity and the team that they've assembled. You know, the first couple of hires were just like, where did these, these guys came from heaven? I don't know where you found these guys, <laughs> but they are the most, the best hires, you know, that I've ever seen. For, well, great, great talent likes to work with great talent. Yeah. And they like to work incredible. on interesting things, right? So, so we've built something that we're really proud of and um, it just, we're kind of humbled by how amazing the technology is. It is amazing. You, you, so post Techstars, you, uh, if I remember right, you raise a small uh, seed round and then you raise more money. So tell us a little bit about that journey of, of raising that money and a little bit about the investors. Right. It was actually, I mean, it's simpler than we thought it was going to be, of course, because you know, we, we had the idea, and I don't know if you remember the exact ball that we had at the end of Techstars, but it was not like this. No, it wasn't right? quite like, You could smooth. get it to kind of go forward once. Kind of. And so... It went somewhere. Right. And, yeah. But the idea and, the, you know, that thing pushed us to the point of, I mean, we did have a lot of in interviews trying to raise money, but knowing that, you know, once we raise money that we were going to have, you know, try to work things out with Paul to bring him into the mix... It wasn't really that challenging to mm -hmm. to raise the first money, and um, the second money, the second time we went out to raise money, you know, we we really pushed hard and went went big and uh, landed both Foundry and Highway Twelve as our investors, which were two of our dream investors. So we kind of we fell into the right spot of the people who knew how to do what we're doing. Cool, and of course you have some fabulous angels also. Well, we yes. have lots of fabulous yes. angels. I was lucky enough to be around early on, so uh, yeah. I'm excited to be an investor. So the, the product's available now. Uh, people can go online and buy it. When will they actually get it if they go and buy Spiro today? Um, they should get it in January in at January. this point. The way production is looking, we should be able to kind of catch up with our current backlog. Yeah. Um, you know, if the backlog increases, then you know, then it will increase. But so right should, now, should have ordered it six months ago if you want. Right. So right now, the yeah. people who reserve theirs. Back in like January of 2011, are the ones, who, no, yeah, back in January of this year are the ones who are probably going to get it before Christmas. And then you know, we're going to start filling the rest of the demand um, as quickly as possible. You know, to, and most folks should get theirs in January. And they're 129 bucks, is that right? 129 bucks. And you get the five apps with it. Yep, five and apps. the ability to, if you're a developer, build more. Right. Which is what you guys want Build to see more. more of, and more apps are already being well, developed. A, so let's let's just wrap with that. Like, what, where does the company go from here? I, I know there's the idea of this app store. Maybe we could show a video. Uh, which which one would be good? Maybe um, games, games, games for games everyone, for everyone yeah. to show some of the ideas that you you think you know people are building on top of this and and what you'd like to see. But tell us about where you want to go in the future as well. While we watch this. Well, you start. You got all the all right. ideas. All right. Well, I mean, you know, I make. I think about that a lot. Every little show or conference I go to, people are like, what's next? What are you going to build next? What, what can you make? And in, in this thing, you could see that we have um, some courses like that. And everybody always asks, like, can we buy, buy those courses from you guys? Or like what? the ramps and the... Right, the ramps. And we, uh, you know, we just purchased those online or something. But we thought that we could actually make that a lot more tangible to what we're doing by building um, electronic devices inside of them that realize when the Spiro hits them or is utilizing them. So say a ramp right there, we could build it into the app as when you hit it, you know, the screen shows like, boom, you hit the ramp, you 20, get some that, points 25 or, points. Yeah. You know, start building, and then other people can build those into their games where you, know, you time it out or have races or 
you know, that's just the first idea. If we have chariots and those little devices, we don't really know what how the chariots and the devices can interact, but we have games where there's bad guys and good guys and automated spheros that, you know, try to chase you down. Um, so some accessories, what about even farther out of the future? I mean, is this a next generation sort of, you know, toy company? Does it build more things that, that people can play with that aren't a ball? Where does it go? I, I think there's a deep well here. I, I don't think, you know, you can look at it on the surface and go, hey, this is just a gadget and that's fun. But when you look at the, the types of games, there's arcade games, there's sports games, there's um, maze type discovery games, there's battle games, uh, there's educational type of apps that you can build on this. Since it's so programmable, we can build really simple ways to uh, teach programming and robotics. Uh, so I think there's a really deep well to Sphero. So right now, we're putting all our energy into making an awesome an awesome robotic ball. It's waterproof. It's you know really durable. We can scale it up in size. We can scale it down in size. And then in terms of the core technology that's inside of it, I mentioned that little IMU. That thing's really powerful. You can put it into a bunch of different applications. And you know we've been brainstorming what we can do with it. But right now we want all attention focused on Sphero because if so, we think so, he's got a long life. At the so for for now, you're really just going to focus on your balls. We're going to focus on our balls. Right. Sorry, I had to. I had to do it. We hadn't done well, it yet. We haven't and done I, it. You yet. know, during TechStars, yeah. it was just nonstop. Right. But you know, maybe there's a future beyond balls as well. But plenty to do with this crazy little guy, Spiro. Right. So very exciting. Well, awesome. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm glad to maybe show people a little bit more about what the company's doing and behind the scenes. So get out there and order your Spiro. Right. Uh, and get going. And we look forward to more fun things from you guys in the future. Thanks awesome. for joining. Always great to have Paul and Adam and to hear from Orbotics. What a great company. Uh, GoSpiro.com to get yours. Thanks to them for joining us in the studio. I want to just remind everybody, uh, applications to the New York program are open. You should be applying as early as you can. One more reason to do it. it used to be 18K. Now it's 118K, uh, as if you need another reason to check out Techstars. So please do apply early. We always like to wrap these things up when we hear from entrepreneurs like Orbotics. We like to wrap it up with their actual pitch. So that's going to fall in a few moments. The company used to be called Gearbox. Don't let that confuse you. It's now called Orbotics. We'll have their pitch coming up right now in its entirety so that you can check that out. We will be back next week with another episode of This Week in Techstars. From the very origins of time, mankind has been fascinated with the ball. The very first sport, of course, Mesoamerican ball, or the modern-day cricket. Fast forward 3,000 years, add some cheap plastic seats, overpriced nachos, and bad tasting peanuts, and we have baseball. We've continued to improve on the ball, creating tennis balls, golf balls, soccer balls, and even power balls. But there remains one inescapable fact. A ball is still just a ball. Until today, I'm Adam, this is Ian, we are Gearbox, and we are reinventing the ball. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So in this video, as you can see, I'm controlling this robotic ball with my smartphone. As I tilt the phone forward, the ball rolls forward. And as I tilt the phone to the left, the ball rolls to the left. And you might ask yourself, well, what's so great about that? Well, it's a robotic ball controlled from a smartphone. <laughs> And we make this look pretty simple, but it turns out that this is a very challenging problem. There's no left or right. I mean, what is forward to a ball? So to make an interactive robotic ball with a sense of direction, you would need both the ball and a clunky, expensive controller with all of this, which would cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars. However, over 50 million people in the US alone already carry this in their pockets in the form of a smartphone. And when we utilize all the items people already have in their phone, what we're left with is our first product, a robotic ball controlled from the smartphone. And this is a unique toy in a new emerging category we call smart toys, where the function of this toy is not determined by the physical device. The function of this toy is determined by the software controlling it. And to make software development easier, 
We've taken thousands of lines of code that implement Bluetooth communication, sensing algorithms, and complex control systems, and we package it all up into an easy-to-use API. And like magic, these two lines are all that are required to send that ball 25 degrees off north at half speed. And we needed to test this API out. So a couple of weeks ago, we had a hackathon weekend at the Techstars bunker, where we invited 15 local developers to come and build Android applications for our prototypes. And some of them had no experience in hardware, Bluetooth, and some of them have never even built a mobile application before. So we were astonished that within only a few hours, every single participant was able to connect to and start controlling our devices in their own unique ways. And I'd like to share with you a couple of the ideas for the apps that have come out of this hackathon and our time here at Techstars. So imagine you're relaxing in your office and you'd like to kill some time with a game of office golf. You can toss out a few disks that represent the holes, and with a swipe on the screen or a swing of the phone, you can send that ball rolling towards the hole. You can also play an awesome game of sumo, where two people can battle it out, tilting their phones, trying to knock the other's ball off of the table. Meanwhile, interactive power-ups and online stats make it a fun and addictive game. And next is my very favorite, the cat app. <laughs> So as Mittens is batting our ball around the house, our app is keeping track of her points, and it can even post to Facebook a quick comment saying, you know, look at my awesome skills. <laughs> and so we built this robotic ball, and we even made an API to control it, but we weren't really sure if people wanted this kind of thing. So we took the ball out to Pearl Street Mall, we took it to the Aspen Maker Fair, Robotics Expo in Denver, and one thing was pretty clear, from the kids to the geeks and everybody in between, the ball was a really big hit. But this was local, so we, we wanted to see what the world thought. We posted a simple video of our prototype on our blog, and within a few days, we had over 50,000 views. And soon, much to our surprise, we'd been covered by 60 blogs and news sites worldwide, and the, the result was seemingly endless comments and emails of people saying, where can I get my hands on one of these things? And we were even covered by our favorite, which was Gizmodo. And so to make money on all of this hype, we have three straightforward ways. First off, we can sell the ball, and we can make, <laughs> and we can make 50 percent margin on every ball that we sell. But just like an iPhone, you don't just buy that phone, you buy those apps too. So we can make 70 percent margin on every single app that we create and sell in-house. But in addition to our apps, we can take a percentage of every application that our partners develop and sell too. And that's all margin for us. We put in no effort to create those apps. So in the end, the lifetime value of a smart toy owner is a lot more than just the hardware retail value. And the, the mobile app market is a $3 billion industry today. And that's projected to be over $12 billion by 2012. And the toy market is $21.5 billion. And that's really not going to go away. And so our, the ball is just the beginning for us. And we feel comfortable in between these two industries bridging the software running on your mobile device with the physical world of toys in that new category of smart toys. And this is a new product in a new category. And to get this ball out, we need to sell it direct on our website so we can have a close relationship with our early customers and developers to know what they want. But we've also had some interest from several large companies in making name-branded balls that we can sell and they can give away as high-tech promotional items and incentives to their employees. And so this progress is actually a combination of over 25 years of Ian and I tinkering with robotics and hacking on software. And since Techstars, we've already made an open Android API. We've made several working prototypes that are controlled from your smartphone. We have developer interest in building applications for these balls. And we've also seen some early customer feedback on what people want to see out of this. So I'm Adam, this is Ian, and we would love it if after the presentation you come and play with our balls.